Hello, welcome pen friends. This is a very uh, viewer requested uh, video and this is going to be my review of the Opus 88 Halo in purple. So I received this as a generous gift from a pen friend uh, about a year ago, I want to say. Yeah, about a year ago. And from pen friend MB, thank you so much. Um, and by the time I received this one, I was completely in love with the brand. So these Opus 88 pens, they're made in Taiwan. And this particular one is a collaboration between Opus 88 and Lennon Toolbar, another company from Taiwan that makes inks. And I haven't been able to find just a lot of information about them, but I did find out that Sugar Inks in New Jersey carries their ink. And I found uh, these pens two places so far. I found them at Van S Pen Shop, and I found them at Jet Pens. So they are, you know, available here, which is really nice because if they're if they're not available in in the country that you're in, or you know, vended somewhere, that makes it a little harder. Like the special one that I ordered. But we will be today. We'll be looking at the pen and the packaging. We'll compare it to the others um, within this pen brand, the Opus 88, and also with, with just some general pens that, in case you don't have any Opus 88s to compare it with, that'll give you some size and um, style comparisons. And then we'll write with this one. I've got this inked up with um, Pilot Orochizuku Murasaki Shikabu. It's a beautiful purple and a very flowy, reliable ink. So then um, at the end, I'll give you my my like summary, my likes and dislikes, and by then you you would have you will hear it all. But <laughs> okay, so let's start with the packaging because that's what we encounter first if you order one. And this is this is a beautiful kind of light blue slip cardboard slip for this case, which is a magnetic. Let's see, I got it upside down. It's got a kind of a magnetic little box, and inside, you know, the pen came right here. And a little booklet and a little eyedropper. These are eyedropper pens. Um, you don't need anything. You don't need a cartridge. You don't need a converter. You just fill up the body of the pen. And we'll look at the other one that doesn't have ink in order to look at that. Now this particular one came with a Lennon toolbar notebook which I forgot about and when I was going through my notes from uh, my pen friend and also uh, I started on this a long time ago. I just didn't I didn't get very far. I remember thinking the pen was so much like the Colero that I didn't need to do the review, but then I, we forget that sometimes we need a, a nice solid look at the particular color and uh, the particular style of, you know, another colorway. So that's why I'm here. Anyway, it came with this little notebook, which I'm now going to leave out because it's, it's got beautiful paper in it. So, um... There is that. I mean, it's a lot of packaging, and I know some people don't like that, but it definitely is gift-worthy packaging. Very nice, and it'll keep the pen protected. So there's that. Now, as I was saying, these are eyedropper-only pens, and they're very, very nice because your, uh, your nib unit, let's just look at that. You know, of course, this one's inked up, so... <clears throat> We're going to have to pull its twin out, or it's not twin, it's cousin out, the Colero, um, so I can show you. But it's really easy to switch nibs. And so each one of your, if you have even just one Opus 88, you can make it very versatile because you can get more nib units. and Or if you don't like the one you got with it, you can go ahead and order. And I saw that pr the price today, July 3rd, 2022, as $16 for the nib units at Van S. So these just literally, well, normally I get this, but my little lobster band to take it off, but it's not tight right now because I just exchanged them. So this is the medium one that did come on this one, but I wanted a broad nib on it. So I, I had a broad nib in my uh, collection here, my hoard, I guess you could call it. So they just switch easily. And I know you would appreciate that if you're like me, where now these feeds don't look at all um, delicate to me. They don't look at all like the uh, Twisby uh, feeds are. But it, yet still, I don't enjoy <laughs> pulling nibs because I'm always worried I'm going to make an El Destructo and, and, you know, mess something up. So, oh, and while we're at it, uh, 
just uh, because the pens are so similar, let me just show you. When you go to ink them up, <clears throat> I, you, you know, you just literally take a syringe or an eyedropper and you just put the ink right in. Let's see if you can. It's got that valve, the shut off, which you control. When you get ready to write, I always open mine up when I'm writing because that gives it free flow of ink and, and I do really like that. You will be able to write with it for quite a while, even with it closed, but I like to leave it open when I'm writing. Uh, but when you close it, it moves that up further and then it acts as a shut off valve. So that makes the pen really safe too. The other thing I was thinking about when I was getting ready to do this review is that uh, I don't use any silicone grease on these, so it's wonderful not having to mess with, you know, silicone grease is messy, and with me then even cleaning the pens, then I'm worried I'm going to get it somewhere it's not supposed to be, which is fine. I, I get along with that just fine with my little moon man, but I like not having to use it. So this is a, a clear demonstrator. The only part where the color shows up is of course the ink you could kind of see in there is purple but it's the section that identifies it in terms of which color and today i saw i think there were five there was um i jotted it down somewhere blue gray green clear and purple so that came in several this comes in several different colors i really like it um i was trying to think one of the places where I'm most likely to have staining is on a clear section too, so it's kind of nice with that purple section. I could use even my stainier ink and I wouldn't really worry. Of course, you could always get it in the cap, but you can clean that pretty easily. So, um, like I said, it's got a broad nib on it right now. I'm going to go ahead and open the valve up because we will be writing with it soon. It has... Uh, couple of features that we can look at real good. It's got a nice little, uh, I think that's the, hmm. Yeah, the, the Colero just has it plain. That, I'm thinking that's a, a Lennon toolbar little thing, but I'm not sure. I'll have to look into that and see. It has a nice clip, a heavy duty clip. It's got a little flex. Let's see. But I, I don't think you'd have any trouble with it. Getting it, It's rounded, so you could probably put that in your pocket pretty easily. Um, oh, I meant to look up the capacity. I, th I think it's 2 mil. Uh, maybe it's probably, yeah. It's, I jotted down that according to the specs online, anyway, it says 2 mil. That's a nice, generous ink capacity. So, we've looked at packaging, and we've looked at the pen pretty good. It's got kind of a little styling here with the silver at the uh, finial, uh, no, not finial, the other end, <laughs> the knob, the little uh, shut-off knob. And it's just generally a very nice size. It's it's about five and a half inches long, but let's uh, segue to comparing it with other Opus 88 pens. I'll be right back. Okay, I have a few duplicate models. Uh, I have two of these, and I have two more of the Omars. But this is the unique, I have just five unique pens. Um, and this is the Colero that looks so much like it and is the same size. The only difference we're seeing in length is because I have that, that uh, shut-off valve open on the Halo, and I have it closed on the uh, Colero. But if I open it, then we're dealing with the same, <laughs> the same length and everything, the same styling on the clip. And uh, it's just the different colorway and different materials. So it's uh, very, very similar. <clears throat> and they all work in the same way with the shutoff valves and the uh, knobs that you open to allow the free flow. So we'll put this one over here. Okay, so this one is, is almost a carbon copy in terms of uh, size and everything. And um, Then you have the demonstrator. This is the one from Stylo and Style uh, from Italy. And that's where I was talking about. It's nice when you can purchase the uh, the special collaboration ones within your country, uh, because if not, it seems like it's a lot more worries about uh, postage and time that it's going to take. And then this is the Omar, um, and they th these both have thicker sections. Let's go ahead and take this. I mean, uh, yeah, take these off, and maybe we'll just use this one to compare since we don't need to dry the ink up while we're talking. Um, 
it's it's a pretty good difference but I just find all of them so comfortable these are th are nice and girthy um, this one and this one nice and girthy and I it doesn't bother me whatsoever but I've heard people say that that they aren't as comfortable for them so that if that being said this one is listed at uh, see it was I want to say I have it written down 10.7 to 16 millimeter. I'm assuming they're going from this thin part, 10.7, all the way up to the, the thicker part of the section. So it is smaller, but it's still comfortable. It's within the range of comfort for me. So I really like that. And then we have the Mini. This is the Opus 88 Mini. Oh, look at all those pretty caps. Um, and this is really thick, too. This is nice and girthy, even though it's a shorter, smaller pen. So, probably need to compare some measurements. I'm, anything to do with measurements, though, uh, other than just in passing, you know, mentioning it, I'm going to put in in the description box because it gets very confusing. And you can look these things up, too, at, at the retailer. They'll generally list everything. They'll list your weights and, and all of that. Um, none of these pens are super heavy, in my opinion. Not even the uh, uh, Omar. And I don't actually uh, post any of these. Let's see whether our halo can be posted. I think it can. <clears throat> I just never do. Let's see. Yeah, it can be. I just, I don't like that. I, I don't really think there's any necessity. My hands are a good size medium hand and I don't need to do that. I kind of wonder if it would even stay on. I hate to push it. Well, yeah, okay, so when I pushed it on, it stays, but I, I don't, <laughs> that makes me nervous for some reason. Maybe I'm just afraid I'm going to scratch it, but it's uh, something you'd have to explore and kind of ask other people that actually do post, because I just am not a poster. <laughs> I'm not a poster of pens, and except for the ones that are screwed up posts, the really small ones, like the little moon man. And that, that brings me to another thing I was going to talk about. The fact that there's really nothing I have that compares eyedropper-wise to these pens. I mean, I could show you a 992 that you can eyedropper, but that's so much smaller and, and just a 2 or $3 pen. These are high-quality, very, very uh, reliable pens that are, like, you know, they've got everything going for them, as far as I could tell. And you can't really compare with the Moon Man either, um... Because of the size difference, this being a pocket pen. I find these very reliable, and I've carried them around in my pocket. I won't do it today because our heat index is uh, 107 to 114. Well, I'm not, gonna <laughs> I'm not going to do that when I go out today, if I have to go out, which I might <laughs> uh, pick up something. But anyway, so I don't really have anything that compares, so I'm going to drag over some just... All of the ones I have inked right now to compare with the Halo, because now we've kind of seen, well, I didn't leave that uncapped, because, truthfully, it's inked, and I don't want it to, you know, sit there and dry, but definitely a lot smaller, but just such a happy pen. <clears throat> so we'll get the, get the cover right back on that one before it dries out. Um, but we'll look, like, at some Twisbees and uh, Lamies so that you can see how they compare to the halo <clears throat> in just a moment. Okay, these are actually uh, my 8 for July 2022 that I'm working with right now. Um, so I'll move the tray away, but we'll start comparing them. Uh, let's see, let's just grab a Twisby Go. So the Twisby Go is shorter. Let's see, We're, we can go ahead and close that valve just for now, just to show it kind of. Shorter, but not by much. And then a Twisby Eco, which is a piston filler. This has that spring mechanism, the Go does. And then this is a piston filler. And it's about the exact same length. I mean, it, it's really, really close. And you've got that the color um, on the outside, so you do have your clear section. 
uh, which I don't mind at all, really, because the only time a stained section really bothers me is when you can't mask it at all with a cap like this. When it's completely clear, then I have had a few times when I was a little frustrated by uh, stains on different pens, but that's, I need to up my cleaning game. I need to probably get a sonic cleaner and <laughs> spend more time mixing the bleach just right and not overdoing it. Okay, and here's a Twisby Swipe. Let's see, put it over here closer. Totally different. Uh, I really kind of think that so far the the Twisby Eco compares better in terms of looks and, and all of that kind of thing. And then uh, just for size and all that, here's a Jen Hao x750 see that it's a standard basically a standard size pen now this this is a uh, screw to cap uh, so that's different than uh, this one the x750 just uh, does that number snaps on and off and so does the uh, the go and the swipe but the twisby eco is very similar it just screws to cap Okay, what else do we have? Okay, I've got one more, and then I think that's probably enough to show you that it's pretty standard size. It's not oversized or anything. And that is the Lamy Safari. Whoops, I got this. I like to see the Lamy logo. <laughs> so, see, it's uh, definitely different materials, and out of, out of that, uh, it's not an eyedropper or anything. None of these are. But I thought that would help you just place the pen within the pen families and community and so forth. Okay, so I think it's time to write with this. <laughs> that is an important part. I brought over my little notebook and proceeded to lose it, so I'll have to come back. That was actually funny. That that was kind of a joke on me because I had it laid open on another part of my desk and so I didn't see the pretty uh, sticker <laughs> on the cover and I, I just didn't see it. So, okay, so we're going to write with this in on Tomoy River 52 GSM paper. Um, this is just a little book that I keep meaning to write down the name of it. Kakuyo. It came in a uh, ink flight and I put from... Um, Adventure Denali, I put her sticker on it, and this is the second one of these that I use just kind of as an informal. This isn't really my ink journal. It's just where I kind of list, you know, currently inked and scribble around and have all kinds of, you know, informal stuff. And, and then it kind of keeps my other ink journal a little prettier, I guess. So, this is... Opus 88 Halo. Ooh, ooh. And I'm going to open the valve because I'll go for quite a ways and without having any complaints. And then it will, um, it's just a nice wet writer. Yeah, you're catching some of that <laughs> gorgeous ink uh, shininess there. And I've got a broad nib unit on it. The, I think. Uh, this one probably came on one of the other pens, but it definitely is a broad nib, and the nib units, like I said, are, are $16 at Venice, which I find just expands the ability to, to have all the different options on these pens. Okay, and it's Pilot. Orochizuku. Murasaki. Shikaboo. I always think of pen friend uh, Waski Squirrel because he uses this ink a lot, or he did anyway. And uh, yeah, it's just a gorgeous ink, and it's it's a safe ink and a and a flowy ink and everything else. So I love it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm a fast writer and this always keeps up. There's no question about it. You get a nice ink flow. And I've heard it said by others that these pens are just so uh, so high quality for the price. Now, we, we might as well segue into my, um, you know, likes and dislikes because that's a perfect <laughs> time actually to do that. Um, because I have a, a thought about that. So 
this pen and these pens in general, the whole line of Opus 88, I love them so much and I would have missed out because I probably wasn't ever going to buy one um, until the same pen friend who uh, sent me this Halo a uh, year before sent me this one. This was my very first um, Opus 88 in the world, you know, for, in my collection, the Colaro in red. And I wouldn't have, you know, I just wasn't really getting into that price range there. So uh, this one here, and well, this one too, I think is still $93 is... Uh, the lowest I've found it and then I have found it up to 110 so you need to look for sales because that happens and you need to look for coupons or a discount codes and things like that look for that look for making a large enough order to get some free shipping or whatever it is you have to do because I remember when I was uh, when I had a windfall and I got a few more Opus 88s from Penchelet I got some really good discounts and it really made my pen money go a lot further. But that's the one thing on the side of what even that it could approach a dislike for me is that these pens are at the top of my, they're over the top of my ordinary pen allowance. They're more like Christmas, birthday. Those two times a year we tend, uh, my husband and I tend to try to treat each other and, and that's the kind of a price range we could get into then. But just kind of day to day, I'd have to get a lot more disciplined about, uh, you know, letting up on the ink and saving up for a pen, which is very sensible and, and should happen. But that's the only thing on the column of, uh, you know, where I've got what I like and what I don't like. But on the like side, whoops, let's move this so we don't get confused about what we're talking about today. I just, it, they're, it's a beautiful pen. It's beautiful. I love that that section will camouflage. Like if I was to put one of my more stainy purple inks or even like uh, if I wanted to put Sailor Ackerby or something like that, I know that tends to stain, but it wouldn't hurt this. It wouldn't make the section uh, a big pain because it's kind of camouflaged and I'll certainly get it that clean. Um, I love the fact that the eyedropper is so reliable that you don't even have to use silicone grease. I mean, you don't have leaks. I haven't had a single leak. Um, you do need to make sure you've tightened everything, uh, you know, on both ends, the nib and the section need to be nice and tightened. Um, I love the large ink capacity. Um, the Omar has a, a larger three mil capacity, but certainly two mils is enough and you don't have to put all of an entire two mil in there if you don't want to. Um, I haven't had any problems writing them dry. And I have with some other pens. I will make them go unnamed because they're in the cheaper range anyway. But I have had burping and so on with some um, notorious pens. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, I love the fact that this kind of fulfills that almost full demonstrator. And they do have a full demonstrator in this one. So this is wonderful. Uh, those of us that like clear demonstrators, um, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, next is I love the comfy grip. This is definitely comfortable for me. Whoops, make sure everything is good. Um, it's not at all uncomfortable. It, it has a nice, uh, my tripod grip just fits right in there. And then that, that last thing that I talked about already so much, the fact that it's so easy to change the nib units. Because that is something that I run into even with a Twisby um, where I don't, I'm just, I don't like to pull the nibs, that's all, because I'm sure I'm going to mangle a feed <laughs> when I go about it. Um, but it's just so easy with these little screw-in nib units to have, like I have the stub nib, whoops, that can, uh, just one of them that can go on either the Colero or the... Um, halo so whoops i just lost the cap to that little thing <clears throat> so there's just a lot to love and for many people uh 93 dollars or 110 dollars would be more toward the lower end or even the medium but for me i'm just telling it straight it's at the top of my uh, what i'm willing to spend and i have spent on pens where i didn't later think i was getting a better writing writing experience like even as much as I do love um, my vanishing point with certain inks, 
I wish, you know, that I hadn't spent that much on it, but that's, you know, that's, <laughs> those are some of the things that we just learn as we go along. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, um, you know, to mention. And if you watch both videos, I did not go back and watch my other video on the Colaro because I was afraid it would influence me. So I didn't, but I would imagine you're going to run into a lot of similar things. Um, I don't recall exactly what I said, but I know that uh, some of these things are persistently at the top of my mind. The fact that I just love it that I don't have to use the grease on these and that... Um, they're so reliable and opening up that valve gives you a choice of, of your ink flow um, and then it allows you to shut it off so when it's in your pen case very little chance of any really big things happening because you only would have what's in the feed so that's nice you could put it away uh, securely I can't think of anything else. How long have I talked? Oh my. Okay, no wonder. I've talked quite a bit. But you guys may have other things you can put in the comments. Um, I've heard mostly, like, I'd say 95% good things from anybody who did end up influenced by me and tried an Opus 88. I've heard really good things. Uh, but I have heard that some of the larger pens might not be comfortable for everybody's grip. So that's something to know. And uh, let's just go from there. Let's meet in the comments and that way we can uh, talk about this pen and any other pens <laughs> that you want to. And thank you so much for watching. And thank you for asking for the video persistently. And I'm sorry it took me so long. I really um, kind of misplaced my papers. I had a... <laughs> it's a mess, let me tell you. Because I added a lot to it. You know, just thoughts that I didn't want to lose track of. Because usually as soon as I press the end on the video, I think of 20 things I should have said, but that's okay. Um, this is just, this, this will give you an overview. And if you're interested enough, then you can check some more. Uh, I know there are lots and lots now of um, reviews on the brand. There may not be too many on this, but I know other people did get around to it quicker than me. So I will see you on the next video and I'll see you in the comment section. Bye for now.